Welcome everybody one more time to another episode of the Sit Rep Podcast. Uh, I am your host, Riskini, and once again we're looking at some uh, at some more gaming um, to kind of get us through another long, tedious week of uh, quarantine nonsense. Okay, so everyone remembers probably last week we took a stab at um, Allied General, which is an old SSI simulation that was actually produced uh, for Panzer General. Allied General was an expansion of that, and then, you know, that game went abandoned where, God knows when, because it's from, like, 1993. And ever since then, people have been coming out with uh, fan edits for that. Well, one of the uh, updates for the Panzer General, Allied General, Allied General 2, Panzer General 2, um, so on and so forth, Kaiser General, and, you know, all these other mods, is another game came out called People's General, which was uh, a more modern look at, uh, you know, China in God knows when, you know, sometime either in the distant, uh, or in, in the near future or in the recent alternate history kind of a thing. Um, kind of like Team Yankee East, you know, and they postulated a few different things. A war with India, a war with the Russians, a war with Taiwan, a war, another war with uh, Vietnam, the Americans get involved, so uh, Korea, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, but anyway, um, people have grabbed that and they have come out with an absolute buttload of mods that I found on a really kick-ass site, and I've been able to download these. No need for um, Defender, no need for DOS boxes, um, no, no need for any of this nonsense. Um, hello there, Mr. Rasmus, how you doing? Um, you know, it's just, you know, this, this neat little thing um, where you can, uh, you know, download this and, you know, pretty much play an expanded and updated version of the general the word here, of the overall Panzer General engine in a whole bunch of new uh, of new settings. So the one that I found interesting, and I tried to download and try out, uh, was Cold War General, uh, which allows you to pretty much do anything from, you know, 1950 to, you know, modern day. So we're going to take a look at um, Cold War General, um, NATO versus Warsaw Pact somewhere in Western Europe, circa 1985. So I've got a scenario kind of picked out here, and we're going to try it out. So here's one of the buttons that you can't see, but uh, there's play a scenario out here in the bottom. Hello, Mr. Rasmus. Hello, Mr. Skobak. So here are some uh, some, game, some games that I've been working on lately that uh, allow us to uh, you know test out the system here. So because Sit Rep Podcast is Sit Rep Podcast because we're just that crazy. But I've gone ahead and uh, built this scenario here. So we've got a theoretical Cold War gone hot, you know, the usual stuff here in northern Germany. But before you start getting uh, any ideas in your head about uh, Russians versus Americans or Russians versus British or even Russians versus West Germans, we have Dutch versus Poles. Because Sit Rep Podcast is where you come when you want to see battles that you will see nowhere else, or almost nowhere else. Um, so I've made up a little battle group of um, Dutch forces of what they had in the mid-80s, uh, and we'll take a look at what they had in just a minute. And um, a uh, look at uh, what Polish, you know, uh, divisions had in the, uh, the mid-1980s, mid to late-1980s. I were playing Case Yellow before this. Oh, you were playing Case Yellow in uh, Panzer General? That's pretty cool. I hope you're doing well. Alright, we're trying to give World War II a little bit of a rest here, so I decided to take a stab at, uh, at Cold War. So I've made up this scenario, and I've tested it a few times. It works okay. Awesome. Awesome, Rasmus. was cool. Yeah, computer gaming is becoming a thing again. Um, <laughs> in this... Uh, God awful uh, quarantine. It's tough to get down to the board gaming club sometimes. Now see what you started, dude. I take I take full responsibility. I'm like the uh, the terrorist group that you know blows something up and then they call you. Yes, we take responsibility. Rasmus is playing Panzer General again. Riskin takes full responsibility. <laughs> no regrets. Okay, so actually before we actually start the game here. Um, let me, sorry about that guys, uh, go into uh, Scenario Builder. So here's how you build a scenario in, uh, in uh, 
Cold War general slash uh, People's General uh, engine. You'll notice that it looks a lot different, obviously, than, than you know, Panzer General, Allied General. There are some similarities, and, and we'll come to that in just a second. But the uh, scenario builder looks, looks pretty awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and edit a scenario that we've already edited so we can take a look at it. Uh, you name the scenario, obviously you put in your, your description or whatever, you, know, you can put as much as you want. I just put in a quick line of text, no big deal. And uh, let's see here. Okay, so, um, again, title of the scenario, description of the scenario, and you can set uh, what kind of climate you want. Uh, whether you want it, to, let's see, what do we got here? Dry, so like desert, tropical, humid. You know, I picked out uh, northern Germany, so, you know, no big deal. You can pick cold climate, you can pick polar climate. So anyway, there's a, I won't go through all the, ch the ch all the choices here, but, you know, you can pretty much set up the map how you want. Um, you do have to pick a map that they have pre-made, so that's a bit of a bummer. There's no, like, complete hex-by-hex -hex scenario editor where you can, like, really design your own scenario like you can, say, in Steel Panthers. Um, but that's fine. Um, right now, eastern and western sides, I gave the western, the western side general air superiority, because, you know, why not? Um, western uh, air superiority, we're going to give the Dutch a little bit of air superiority. The Dutch had a lot of F-16s, uh, they were just starting to get F-16s in this time, um, again, mid to late 80s. Um, the, um... Eastern side, again, that's Warsaw Pact, so we're going to be looking at uh, the Polish uh, ground forces. They have, um, I was disappointed to see that you can't give the Polish Heinz, so I may have to tweak a few settings in here so that we can get that. But we were able to give them some, like, MiG-23s and, and things like that. I was going to buy them an SU-25 Frogfoot, but it was a little too expensive. We try to keep this game, you know, pretty, pretty small. Uh, scenario builder configure game, right, right, right. Oh yeah, here's where you pick a map. So they have a bunch of maps that you can pick from, but it's already locked in. At the moment. Again, we're editing a pre-existing scenario. When you're building a new scenario, this little key here is uh, is lit up. So here's where you pick your countries. Um, we have two players. Which side is on the eastern, quote unquote, western uh, eastern side? Which one's on the western side? I can't help but notice that they have the eastern selector on the left-hand side and the western selector on the right-hand side. I'm not sure who designed that, but they need to go back to school. Um, but it's fine. Uh, it's a little counterintuitive. You pick, you know, how many side, how many players you want in the game. I just picked two, obviously. And uh, we have um, the primary country uh, for the western side is the Netherlands. These are all your choices. And for the Warsaw Pact, I picked the Poles. I think these are supporting factions that you can bring in, but I haven't messed around with them yet. You can pick air assets, um, air, air support points that you can come in with. Um, again, I'm giving the Dutch air superiority, and I'm having the AI Polish player with nothing, because the Russians are using all the air support for themselves. Um, now, they'll still have a little bit of air support, but it won't be near That's uh, that 70-30 ratio that I was mentioning before. Yes, how you doing? Finally, I was struggling at the Twitch chat box open. It wasn't even on screen. Hey, guys, yeah, guys, how you doing? Um, Danes, we're close. I picked the Wilhelm Schaven map, uh, Rasmus. The Wilhelm Schaven map for Western Germany. So we are not quite in Denmark, but really close. Um, but no, I don't actually see Danes on this map. Sorry. I guess you can pick NATO and just kind of, you know, go with it. We have everybody else. We have the Spanish, French, Finland. That's not NATO, but Italy, um, yeah, f both uh, Belgium, West Germany, East Germany. No, no, I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. Uh, <laughs> UK, Netherlands, Hungary. Yeah, sorry. I guess you can pick no country or NATO. That's messed up, man. They have Greece, but no Denmark. Not cool, man. Okay, so anyway, um, you pick out what countries they are. You can pick generally how many points you get to build your army with. And go on to the next screen. So here is the map. You can either have it with or without hexes on there. Um, I went ahead and picked it with. But, uh, and then you actually set up your force. So if I go to adjust units for the first side, here are the forces that I have selected for my uh, Denmark. Jim versus the AI. Yes, Gaz, that's true. 
Um, it is uh, me versus the AI. Um, if we wanted to set this up, we could do this uh, for two player. We'd have to set it up via Skype, whether the Skype player or whatever. We, we'd have to. We, we, we would. We would. There would be a way to figure it out. I just don't know exactly how that would work right now. I mean, hell, dude, it took me an hour. Does this mean he can't shoot gas? You know what? I'm not even gonna. Re I'm not even gonna reply to that. Um, I'm also trying to look at how much of my screen you can actually see because this display is not perfect. I'm sorry to say. Yeah, the, the the screen display here, guys, is really giving me a rough ride. Um, I did the best I could, but these old games, sometimes they really are very, very finicky when it comes to... Uh, I'm sure if, if you've ever tried to stream any of these old games before, um, or if you follow other Twitch channels where they try these old games, sometimes these really old, like, DOS-level games, DOS-based games, have a really rough time uh, displaying through OBS. I can't get Steel Panthers to display at all. I can't even get a screen pick of, of um, which we call of, um, of Steel Panthers. So just getting it to display literally took me. I don't even know what time it is. Um, uh, it's 7:09. Took me damn near an hour. Um, hence we had the false start stream earlier today. Um, well, I try to get it up to where it could at least show a little, and even this isn't perfect. You can see a little bit of black margin on the top uh, and on the bottom, so it's 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 not perfect as it is. Um, but anyway, uh, here are the uh, here are the Dutch. They have uh, Leopard ones, although these are upgraded Leopard ones, the A4 variant. I've got three units of them. You can give them uh, different levels of uh, veteran status. So there's regular, veteran, and elite. I made most of my um, my Dutch veterans, um, just you know, like to account for better training or whatever. Um, two batteries of American-made M103 uh, M109 Paladins, some slight recon, and these um, infantry fighting vehicles here. Also, one small squadron of uh, Dutch, I guess lend lease is the wrong word, um, U.S.-built um, Apache helicopters. At least that was the only option the game gave me. And I think that's my whole force. Again, with 3,500 points, making everybody elite. Not elite, uh, I'm sorry, a uh, veteran. Uh, the money goes fast. So, yeah. Not, not really a big force. For uh, player number two, again, the poles, if I go into their adjust units. Looking at what they had available for the year that I had selected, we're looking at tons of T-72s. So T-72s for days, obviously. Instead of three um, veteran units of Leopard 4, I'm sorry, Leopard 1A4s, I have six T-72 export M1s. So these are the slightly poorer version of the T-72s than what you would see uh, the Soviets use for some of their... Um, uh, divisions, not in group of Soviet forces in Germany, but in uh, Central Soviet Forces Group and Northern Soviet uh, Group of Forces. But their their group of Soviet forces in Germany, their main center fist, um, would mostly be using T-64s and <coughs> excuse me, and T-80s. The T-72 was built as an export tank primarily. It didn't really turn out that way, but that was the intention. And uh, I've been on that soapbox long enough, so I won't jump back on it again. Um, suffice it to say that these uh, Polish units have plenty of T-72s. I've got two batteries of BM-21 Grads. Those are the uh, multiple launch rocket systems. A little bit of air defense, because there are some uh, uh, some NATO aircraft that are running around the table. Not so happy about that, so i got to take air defense to cover for that. And a crap load of BMPs! Why do they call them BWPs? I'm not sure. Uh, maybe they're a Polish variant. I honestly don't know. Um, but I just took them as basically BMP ones. These are the ones with the AT-3 Sager anti-tank missile and the uh, 76 millimeter cannon. Am I capturing the screen or the process? I tried to do a Windows capture over and over and over again, Scobic. It was not working. That's the uh, previous junk stream that I'm going to have to delete on the, our, off of our channel later, where it was showing. Um, it was like just showing like my video library. No matter what, I couldn't get it to switch off of that window and into another window. 
So I had to do display capture, which is my normal, the normal way I do things. Um, just having to, you know, really zoom it out. So I got the size right. I just can't really fix the um, the aspect ratio. So this is kind of what we're uh, we're stuck with. You're only missing about the bottom 10% of the screen. Um, is the only problem I'm really having right now. Um, okay, go away now. Alright, cool. So those are the two forces. Uh, let's see, what else can we take a look at? Again, uh, this is the map that they had available for us. Actually, they had tons of maps. This is just the map I picked. I just grabbed something in northern Germany, so I picked Wilhelm Schaven. Um, this is uh, the northern Germany map that they had available for us. So that's the North Sea out there, obviously. Um, I'm sort of imagining a, a Russian breakthrough, and what they're doing is, uh, now that there's you know some of that frontline NATO forces, British and West Germans, in the northern part of, um, of Germany have finally started to splinter. This is probably like on day two or three of a general World War III in Europe. Um, the Soviets are committing a second um, echelon and in go the Poles through the breach. And their job is to just run as far west as they possibly can while more Soviet forces come up from Poland or Soviet forces that were committed in the first shockwave are now reconstituted and get ready to be, uh, to be recommitted in phase three of the general offensive. So as they're rushing through the breach, they're met by NATO reserves made up of these, uh, these Dutch uh, mechanized infantry and armored forces coming in uh, from the west. So, simple, simple, simple. The main hex I gotta worry about for the Dutch is this one here. That, notice that's the only... Okay, these Dutch flags here, I'm not sure what they're for. But the flags we have to worry about are these ones that have the, uh... The little gold, um, whatchamacallit around them, the little gold, uh, outline around Those are objective hexes. I think these were objective hexes that I inadvertently put down when I was trying to learn how to build a scenario, and I was not able to, uh, to remove them. But they have no game effect. The ones that have game effect are the ones that still have that gold, um, border around them, that gold frame around them. Those will cause the game to end pretty much instantly. Um, if you lose it. Only because the, the Dutch only have one. The Poles have one that they already own, and they have to capture two more in order to win. So the Dutch are set up. Down here are the two uh, divisions, so to speak, of uh, Polish armored and mechanized infantry. Each with three battalions, or well, I'll just call them units from now on, because who knows what the scale actually is here. <clears throat> um, three units of uh, T-64s, three units, I'm sorry, T-72s, three more units of T-72s, each backed up by three units of BMP, mechanized infantry, each backed up by one battery of BM-21s, each backed up by at least a little bit of air defense. And uh, the general Polish plan is to strike in these two directions. Here's one. Up here to the north is the other. Well, actually, I don't know, because the AI is going to be playing them, but what they're going for are these two hexes with the uh, the gold frame around them. I shouldn't say what the Polish plan is. I don't know what the Polish, what the Polish plan is. As for the, uh, the Germans, I'm sorry, as for the Dutch, the Dutch have a little bit of a screening force here of those, uh, those APCs, backed up by uh, those M109 Paladins, American self-propelled artillery, a little bit of a recon vehicle and that uh, squadron of uh, Apaches. And then in the back, they've got their three units of Leopard 1s. That's a counter strike force. So, whichever way the Poles lunge, that's the way that they're going to be coming in. I don't need to save it. Uh, what the hell? Come on, machine. All right, whatever. I didn't change anything. All right, cool. So now I will... Oh, that's what I meant to do. Yes, get out of here. All right, so now we're going to try and play this scenario. So here we go. 
Alright, nether ones are on defense, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to skip the first nether one's turn. I think that I think they're giving me the first turn automatically because I'm the the, the the human player or whatever. But you know what? The poles are on the offensive, so I'm just going to go ahead and give the poles the first turn. Poland, first turn of 10, Sunday, August 5th. That's supposed to be 1985. This game only lets you to start the timeline in nine, in the year 2001. I'm going to have to work on that. There's another mod I can download that fixes that. But what I was aiming for here was August 5th, 1985. This is the date postulated by Sir John Hackett in his novel, The Third World War in Europe. And also, um, this is the cinematic universe, so to speak. This is the world in which Harold Coyle chose to set his Team Yankee novel. So when you, again, when you play Team Yankee, when you read Team Yankee, you're not really in the Team Yankee universe. There is no Team Yankee universe. The Team Yankee universe is really Sir John Hackett's Third World War in Europe. Much more of a broad scope, and that's where you get in all your other NATO forces, like the Dutch we're going to see here today. So here come some Poles! T-72's on the march. Uh, Rasmus, how was your, um, how are you doing in, uh, KCL, were you playing the Germans, or were you playing the Allies? I'm assuming that you were playing the, uh... Do I have the Fate of a Nation rulebook? Yes, I do. I have a PDF, for, uh, a second edition, or whatever? Uh, yes, I do. I have the Fate of a Nation rulebook that is, uh, like, the second release of it that was, um, released for Team Yankee. So, the first time they released Fate of a Nation is the one I didn't like very much. Um, again, I talk a lot of trash about Battlefront and Flames of War. I do apologize for that, but that's old Flames of War. That's old Battlefront. They have made huge strides forward, and they've really, really uh, done a lot of great things to um, improve um, a lot of their, a lot of their, you know, material and a lot of their products. I mean, their miniatures have always, have always been awesome. It's the rules and the realism and stuff like that that have been a little rough in the past, but they have made major, major fixes. One of those major fixes, Fate of a Nation, now takes place in the Team Yankee rule set instead of Flames of War rule set, and it includes 1973 Yom Kippur War, both massive wins for uh, Battlefront. Uh, whoever's in charge of Battlefront now, they're paying attention. They're doing things good. Um, Germans and press 90% to the coast. Nice. Nice. A little miniature battle report from Rasmus and his uh, Case Yellow offensive. How did you get through those uh, those Verdun? Um, which we call it? Uh, there's a big tangle of fortified hexes down by Verdun. You kind of have to either go through or go around. Uh, it's kind of tough. Scoback says in the stream, I don't like all the removal of the flavor from the units in Flames of War, like the staff teams for artillery. Okay, that probably should have stayed in. Um, however, I do like a lot of the other stuff they pulled out of Flames of War, because a lot of it was junk. Um, and, you know, reasonable men may disagree, but spearhead rule, Sherman Jumbo rule, Patton rule, infiltrate rule, stormtrooper remove rule, this... Uh, no. Um, but yeah, the different people like different games or whatever, but those were the kinds of things I did not like. In the older versions of, um, whatchamacallit, of, um, Flames of War. Now, they're sort of still in there in 4th edition, so, like, like, um, there's still something sort of like Stormtrooper move, to my knowledge, but it's like, like a shoot and scoot rule. Everybody can kind of do it. Some armies and some units have a better chance than others. That I like a little bit better than just Germans can do it and nobody else can, because the space-time continuum changes when you put on a different color shirt. Um, yeah. And the other thing I don't like about old Flames of War, a lot of times, is the idea that, uh, you're not playing the game, the game is playing you. Um, if you want to do, like, if you want to infiltrate, if you want to, uh, have your jumbo take more damage in the beginning part of your platoon than the rest of your tanks, you don't have to actually do it. You just invoke special rule 17A decimal 4, 4, 5, 6, book 19, chapter uh, 96, you know, subsection C. And, uh, you know, you can kind of point to a paragraph in the book that says, my army, you know, 
my army is doing this. Infiltrate rules like that, spearhead rules like that, jumbo rules like that, some of the Patton rules are like that. Why is Patton a playable figure on a company battalion level war game? I don't know. But again, I don't want to just, you know, slam on old Flames of War. I know it has huge numbers of fans. I just really like in Flames of War and Fate of a Nation and Team Yankee and some of the changes that they've made, I think have really kind of brought the game up. Um, but again, that's probably just my opinion. I did get a hard copy of the Fate of a Nation and Depticon a while back. Uh, if you want it, I do not have a use for it. I have it on PDF. If you don't, uh, if you don't want it, sure. I will, uh, yeah, let's get in touch. I'll, I'll send you my, uh, my snail mail address. If, I forget if you're sure. Uh, Rasmus, I would definitely appreciate it. Anyway, we're starting to lose uh, viewers here, so let me get this game going again here. Alright, so, let's take a look at what's going on here. We don't see very much. If I go to my strategic map, yeah, I don't see any Polish units. These are old Polish objective hexes here, here, and here. I know where my units are, obviously the small uh, Dutch flags. I see no... Polish units. They've, they've kind of plunged forward, but they haven't actually made contact with any of my units yet. That's okay, because guess what? I got 24 air support points that I can call in, and to do aerial recon costs two. Out of my 24. RBC, um, different options cost more, but for now I'm just going to do some basic reconnaissance. I'm going to send an F-16 over this invasion corridor, and I'm going to see if I can find some... Uh, Find some, some Polish troops. Whoa! Okay, uh, yeah, we found some Polish troops here. Okay, so we're looking at T-72s, three of them here, two BMPs, T-72s, three BMPs, and there's the Shilko. Uh, so I want to watch out for that. So what I'm probably going to do here, folks, is um, try and attack that Shilko with... Uh, with my tanks. I know that sounds crazy, but if I knock that Shilka out with my tanks, my Apache can get in there and get some work done. I may even be able to call in an airstrike and uh, knock out some uh, knock out some more Soviet armor while they're all piled up in these neat little groups like this. So, now that I have the axes of uh, enemy advance spotted... Oh no! My tanks will not quite reach them. I think I put my reserves a little too far back. They can't reach the battlefield on day one. Defensive positions. I don't know if that did good or not. I'm pretty much just trying to block up this road. Cool. That was not very good. Alright, I'm going to send in my helicopters um, against the southern battle group. The southern battle group doesn't seem to have any air defense with it. Because uh, I kind of messed up my initial deployment here. Oof. So it gives you, um, hopefully you guys can see that. I'm going to scroll the screen up here so you can see it a little bit better. Wait for the latency so I can be sure. Okay, cool. Now you guys can see it. Um, you'll see where, it, where you, when you target an enemy unit, it gives you expected uh, losses on both sides. So my, my Dutch Apaches are flying in. They're expected to take zero losses. And um, that Soviet, I'm sorry, that Polish tank unit of nine strength is meant or is predicted to take eight out of nine. Those are pretty good odds. I'm going to go ahead and take the shot. Um, I got 0 and 7 instead of uh, 1 and 8. Yeah, that's fine. Just wanted to blunt the edge of that a little bit. I'm going to block off this road here. Because I don't want the Soviet... Uh, I keep calling them Soviets. I'm sorry. I don't want the... Oh! don't want the uh, Polish to open up this highway here, to the, this eastern highway to the north. 
and get a side door into that objective X. I want to hold them in place at least long enough for my tanks to come up and engage. I probably put them too far back. Um, Cause they kind of outnumber me about two to one. But uh, and then once I get them contained, I'm going to call in some airstrikes. And I'm, yeah, airstrikes are really going to mess them up if the weather holds. This game has random weather or semi-random weather, and if the weather gets bad, yeah, you know you're. <laughs> All right, so we're going to see what the poles do. Shilka, coming after my Apaches, I think. Ooh, my Apaches got clogged. They're going for a breakthrough right in the center. I just moved my last tank in the clear. Um, I think whether they just got blown up. <laughs> Technically, it was a paladin, but yeah, I think I did move him in the clear. I think I messed up. Oh my god. No! That ain't a bit of a joke there. Oof. That was really terrible. All right. At least we know where the enemy is. And I still can't reach those shilkas. Oh, I, I screwed this one up, guys. All right. Uh, first off, I'm going to try and finish off these... Uh... Oh, actually, hold on. Alright, here goes one a unit of BMPs out of gas. Done! Can I undo that move? Okay, let's get him into some better tree cover. We can fight more than once. Do it! Chase them down the road. Yeah, these uh, Leopard 1 A4s are a lot better than these T-72s. And when you're when you're playing uh, the Dutch in this scenario, you've really got to make the most of your uh, qualitative advantage. Because, man, I'm telling you, you will get clobbered if you don't. No. Cool. Okay, Shilkas are down, guys. Leroy Jenkins, yeah, the, <laughs> the Poles are definitely doing some Leroy Jenkins. Okay, so my mar- I don't know if they're martyrs, they just call them AIFVs. Um, I'm assuming there's some variant of martyrs, or the, um, oh, they had like, the like YCR-80s or something like that the Dutch have for their APCs. Um, they do have some missiles and some automatic cannon on them that make them pretty easy to tear up, uh, light Soviet armor. I don't put them up against T-72s if I can help it. But against uh, Grods or against Shilkas? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, so uh, most Soviet air defense is now toast. What's this guy looking like? Alright, I'm gonna leave him alone for now. Um, seven second call and some airstrikes. I've got 23 points left. It's 10 points for airstrikes. Yeah, I'm calling in two airstrikes right now. I gotta blunt this attack like right off the bat. F-16s, cluster bombs, that was a little disappointing. Here comes my other one. on BMPs well enough. Unfortunately, my uh, occupy that objective axis. If a Russian BMP unit gets around me and 
steals it, I'm really going to be upset. Don't engage. Units on, units on that. Oh man, who has a gun yet? Nobody. Uh, it's showing him as an available unit because he still has movement points left, but I'm going to leave him alone for now. I just want him to occupy that objective X. See if I can give uh, reinforcements to that uh, leopard. I don't know if I can with the, an enemy zone of control. No, it's not. Let me do it. I have to pull him out. Damn it! Fall back! I'm I'm getting ass beat here because I'm not. I did win this scenario earlier today, but I'm getting the cramp kicked out of me today for sure. No mistake. I'm not doing very well on this scenario, guys. I'm not even gonna lie. What kind of air support do I have? Any? Not at all. Enough for one airstrike. I desperately need it. <laughs> oh my god, please! Yeah, he, this guy pretty much has an open road all the way back to the objective max. Take him out! Soviet tank or a Polish tanks break through my back country. All my leopards are all surrounded. Enemy line, uh, you no more, uh, you're no longer adjacent to an enemy unit, you're no longer an enemy zone of control. I think I can build him back up again. Nice, he's back up to 10. Sweet! This guy, I would love to withdraw him if I could, but he's kind of surrounded. Let me see if I can bust him loose. Damn it. Pull the helicopters back so they can defend against these, uh, Russian tanks that are Polish tanks that I know are driving on my objective X. Right, maybe if I can kill him, I can withdraw him afterwards. Alright, now he's opened up, uh, his movement availability has opened up. Again, fall back. I think the Poles are going to take the southern objective X. I, d I don't have enough units left to, control, uh, to defend it. Um, 
anybody else uh, besides him? I know about him. This guy hasn't done anything yet? What is he? Leopard 1A4. Anyone else hasn't moved yet? Yeah, I know about him. That's it. Okay, yeah, I'm not moving that little recon unit that's garrisoning my uh, objective max. Oh man, I might be able to save this one. You get a defense bonus for terrain. Yes, you do. Um, I'm not sure exactly how it works. Again, I know it's loosely based on um, Panzer General. Uh, tanks don't get nearly as much as infantry. Infantry in woods or town get a pretty good bonus. But I'm not 100% sure how, uh, how awesome it is um, with tanks. I have just enough for another airstrike. Dude, if I win this game, it's just going to be through air power. Because <laughs> I didn't do very well on the ground. Full, full disclosure. Oh, I don't know where the hell the damn Polish went. Oh no. F-16s! Toast. We are killing Polish tanks left and right, I just don't know if we're killing them fast enough. I'm almost certain my, my flanks have collapsed, and they're going, they've got some units heading toward this objective X, and some units going for this objective X. So if I go back to my strategic map, what's left of my army is this little holding force here. I'm almost certain there's going to be a Polish column up to the north and another Polish column here across this river to the south. Going for these two gold-framed uh, Polish objective X's. If they take them both, I think they win. Um, it's never happened. I've only played this game a couple times. I downloaded it yesterday, so I'm... <laughs> By no means an expert on this one yet. Oh, man. Alright, I should have some air left. Three left. I'm gonna call in a uh, air reconnaissance unit. I'm gonna see what's going on here to the south. That was a waste. He saw nothing. Oh, boy. Alright, this guy is I'm gonna take a breath. Alt R. Boom. He's now reinforced, but that was his turn. This leopard 1A4 is going to reinforce my southern uh, wing here. Get those woods. He still doesn't see anything. This guy, I'm gonna reinforce him as well. And this leopard 4 or leopard 1A4. I don't want to leave my center too weak, but I want to extend my flanks a little bit. It's not letting me across this line here because that's not a road, that's a canal. I guess. So I guess I'm going back for this bridge. Alrighty, so next unit. Oh, my helicopters haven't done anything yet. Helicopters, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with. You can only resupply or rearm them over a friendly airfield. I put them over a friendly airfield and tried it. It doesn't work. So I don't know if there's something I did wrong in the uh, in the scenario design. Um, but they, they these a AH-64 Apaches either get damaged because there's no gas to fix them, or they uh, they run under missiles. They only have six. Um, like right now, he's got, he's only got one shot left out of six. Yeah, he's he, he's not doing so hot. He's pretty much only got one one ammo thing left. I'm gonna go park him over this uh, objective hex so that if somebody goes for it, at least I get one shot. On. I'm not giving it away completely for free. Okay, that's gonna go ahead and uh, complete my turn. Only on turn eight, or only on turn six. I have to last. I have to last ten turns. Oh, they're still coming at my center. Thank you. Guys. 
Yeah, they're still pressing my center. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Polish. I will not forget the favor. His last missiles. Alright, guys, here come your Apaches. Do it! Yeah, you only got two of them. Leopards, finish them off. Nice! That was pretty epic. <laughs> I won't lie, that was pretty epic. Yeah, you see where um, the available movement hexes I have are... You know, ex or excluding that uh, that yellow line or that blue line, that's got to be a canal of some kind. I am in northern Germany after all. all right, I'm gonna follow this guy back, but only a little, because uh, apparently the poles are not developing against my wings. They're they're still coming at my center, so I will count my blessings. Much more comfortable in sending my uh, AI CVs against uh, BMPs rather than uh, I wonder if I should go look at that X. That's a powerful, powerful unit, and I have. What's the word here? Um, confirmed enemy units in front of me. I'm gonna go ahead and get. I'm gonna forget about my wings again. You know, and uh, continue to engage enemy forces that I have confirmed. Uh, chase them away! That may be a bad move. Undo that, undo that. That's not what I wanted. Yeah, that's, you're literally looking at my whole army right now. Two, three units of uh, Leopards, one uh, YCR-80, I think they're called. Uh, if anyone wants to uh, wants to Google that, Dutch um, APC, so the 1980s, it's like YCR-85 or YCR-80, something like that. Um, big catch for the win, even in the Cold War. Yeah, Leopards, are, I mean, Leopard 1s were, were, were nothing to sneeze at in the, in the early 1980s. Obviously, the Leopard 2 was coming out, but again, I'm not putting these guys up against, uh, you know, GS, a uh, group of Soviet forces in Germany, T-64s, T-80s, you know, the really good stuff. I'm putting them up against uh, more or less second line Polish T-72 M1 exports. Um, I, I did make everybody veteran, you know, because I didn't want the game to get too cheesy. Also, I didn't want that many units on the board. Um, but yeah. It's all good. Uh, now I forget what I was gonna do. Who? Oh yeah, well, I don't. I don't want to move that unit. So all my other units have moved. Yeah, that's my whole force. Um, what does it say for the canal when you put the mouse on it? Um, that's a good question. Uh, oh, it says river. River 1915, 2016. Those are grid coordinates. Yeah, that would make sense. Obviously, it thinks this is a river, and this is a uh, this canal is also a river. Obviously, there's also a bridge there, but apparently these smaller canals. The map's a little confusing. Don't uh, I guess the I guess these canals are so small they don't bother your tanks, but these larger canals do. Again, guys, these are all like fan-made mods, whatever, for the original people general uh, people's general system. So um, yeah, there's gonna be little uh, little things here. And there. Combined arms, baby. I'm, I'm doing my best, man. I have to do combined arms because I've lost too much... Uh, I've lost way too many units. The first time I designed this game, just decided to test it out before the, uh, before the stream. Um, I gave the Russians... I said, oh, the Russians... Or, I gave the Polish... Oh, the Warsaw Pact is on the offense. 
Uh, let me go ahead and give them, like, you know, 60-40 air superiority. Dude, they just flew over me with MiG-23s and just, like, bombed me back into the middle of, la you know, middle of last week. And that, they just, they won on, like, turn three. <laughs> it didn't go very well at all. And I was like, that might be realistic, but, uh, yeah, guess what? Um, that makes for a pretty crappy stream, so... Again, it is just the AI, but again, also, I downloaded this game, like, yesterday, so I'm not, uh, no one's proficient with it yet. There's just so many of them. 8 of 10! I'm pretty sure he's out of... No! Damn it! I'm not trying to uh, move the tanks, I'm trying to select the damn longbow. Yeah, the longbow is now out of ammunition. I can still use them to spot with, I think. Because I do have friendly airfields here. See, it says airfield 621. I leave him there. I don't do anything else with him. I try to hit, you know, Alt uh, S to supply, Alt R to. Uh, give them replacements, it's not letting me do it. I don't know if uh, it's something I did wrong in the scenario design, I'm sure. I don't have that designated, I guess, as a military airfield or something. I don't know. But for now, he's out of ammo. The game's almost over him, but I'm just going to use him to kind of spot for me. All right, so there's not a huge threat to the south. I'm if I were him, I would have gone up this road that's undefended and at least snatched one objective max, but I'm not going to complain. I guess that's what happens when you fight the AI. The AI does a lot of stupid shit. Alright, before I go any further, do I have I don't quite have enough for an air mission. Next turn I should have enough for an air mission. No airstrike this time, boys. I've noticed that APCs with anti-tank counted weapons do better when you don't have to move them. Um, which is actually pretty realistic. So I'm gonna hit them and then I'm gonna pull back after this. Does blowing up BMPs ever actually get old? Hold that bridge. Especially with Leopard 1s. But I'm not gonna send Leopard 1s against crappy ass BMPs that are almost dead or these grots. At least not my my best Leopard 1s. This T this T72 at 10 strength, maximum strength is the biggest threat on the table right now, and I'm totally playing a reflexive defense. Absolutely. I have no qualms. That was bloody, but it turned out okay. Because uh, this guy has the best support from that garage. Speaking of garage... How about you die? Only one? Oh, that was just a terrible roll on the RNG there. It was predicting five losses. Also, I'm shooting 105mm rifle shells through unarmored trucks. Come on, man. I only killed one? <laughs> My machine guns can get the job done with it at this rate. Alright, things are starting to stabilize a little bit. If I don't lose an objective hex off my wing, I should be okay. Any more turns besides my headquarters unit? That's gonna be it. Or not my headquarters unit, my garrison unit. End the turn. Polish turn, 8 of 10. Let's see what happens. Um, do I need to capture the area for it to be a friendly airfield? That's a good question. That might be it. Um, units that don't move and trench. Okay, now I have the I have, uh, tips turned on. Alright, now that one's turn 9. Do I have any. Ooh, he is trying to sneak something around me. Thank you, Apache. Even when he's out of ammo, he's able to, uh, to help me out. Just to make sure this guy doesn't develop too much of a threat against me. Right? 
those BMPs are, are, are doing some, some damage, man. I mean, do I have any airstrikes? Nope. Damn it. I'm still going to get at least one more airstrike. I want to send at least one leopard back to this bridge on the north side of this canal. This canal has to be sort of bisected. If a threat develops from the north, I did lose track of some of those Polish units, and they either try and take this northern objective hex, or they come hard at my one and only Dutch objective hex um, in the south. That's kind of really kind of make me up. Great. I'm running out of money. I hit Control R. I only got um, some partial reinforcement on those uh, IFVs. I'm tempted to go chair uh, terracing out to the east, and you know, but if I do that, he has nothing that I can support him with. So let me not be that guy. This leopard one is gonna we're gonna we're gonna play it smart. Fall back and engage some of these surprises. Trying to play a little conservatively here. Because we're almost done with this game. I don't want to lose. Yeah, he, he's retreating. Oh no, he's not retreating. Yeah, there's some he's not flanking me. They're pushing hard for that objective hex. I think they're a little too late though. Do I have any air support? I'm still only at nine. Oh well. Alright, what's going on? Strategic map. Yeah, they're coming around the south side of that objective hex and they're coming up the center road right toward that objective hex. They're making a grab for that, uh, for that Dutch objective hex right there in the middle there. I gotta hold it for like one more turn. Fortunately, I'm in pretty good shape. Like you, you're done. Goodbye. Baby. How do they all go? I bet they're going for this objective max. I'm gonna chase down that road and see if they went that way. Yep, sure enough. Are you not gonna engage? You out of ammo? Yep, he's out of ammo. Oh my god. My leopards are out of time. <laughs> my lepos lep lepos. <laughs> my lepers. My <laughs> my leopards are out of ammunition. Oh no, we just snatched up an objective X, I think. I couldn't stop him. Alright guys, that's the game. 10 turns out of 10. Eastern loss. That means allied victory. I uh, just read about helicopter replenishment. It does state a friendly airfield or combat support unit. Yeah, I've got uh, this here. Oh, hold on, let me go ahead and... So now we're, re we're re reviewing the battlefield. Hopefully they'll show us where everybody's at. Okay, that game got ugly, but I really did kick the crap out of... Uh... Yeah, he doesn't have much left. I've destroyed all his tanks. Okay, I'm sorry guys, I got uh, distracted there. Um... So it looks like he did grab that objective hex. I don't know why it's telling me that uh, he lost it. He 
did snatch one. He didn't quite reach that one. But yeah, his army's pretty much shattered. And it was, again, it started off twice the size of mine. Um, again, it's, it's the AI. So, um, yeah, that's not terribly hard to beat once you learn how the game works. But uh, to talk to Gaz's question a second ago, this right here was an airfield. It says airfield right there. I guess I don't have it activated because I don't occupy it, or... Keyword being friendly, I think. Yeah, that might be it. Uh, right now it may be considered a, uh, a neutral airfield. So maybe I have to put a unit on there or something like that. Uh, in order to have it be uh, replenishable. I, I have to put a gas unit. I have to put... <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because you, you can you, you can set up um, just like we did with Arabs not Arabs Wars, just like we did with Allied General last week. You can set up your units and give them their own names or whatever. So I'll set up a little gas air defense unit and I'll park them on an airfield. And uh, is that the only airfield on this map? Maybe that way my helicopters can uh, can do something. Tell you what. Um, yeah, so I still have three partial Leopard units left. I've destroyed all six of his T-72 units. That game started off a little hectic, but, uh, yeah, my, my Dutch Armored Corps here actually did, or my Dutch Armored Division actually did pretty well. Um, once they recovered a little bit. Um, I did want to give the Dutch, uh, put them on the back foot a little bit in their scenario design. I was going for a Polish, you know, spearhead, kind of driving back into uh, North German countryside. So it's uh, that's kind of what I was going for there. And again, it's the AI. If I wanted to make the game a little more challenging, I would balance out the air, the air, the air power. I would have both sides at 50/50, or I would even give the Warsaw Pact a little bit of a, of a, you know, a little bit of an edge. Force the Allies or force the Dutch to take some air defense and uh, do it that way. Eastern player might need all objectives. Uh, yes, I know they do need all objectives. But it was telling me that they um, had only... Ca ah, I guess that is capture two. One, two. Because obviously he, he quote-unquote captured um, his own objective X down here. He left a BMP on it. And he captured this one. And uh, yeah, that's probably what it meant. Because it said um, Eastern lost two objective X's captured. So... I think that's the one uh, up there. I tried to design this uh, scenario without any objective hexes. It didn't work. It literally won't let you do it. Because um, objective hexes gets get really uh, get really finicky in these kind of games when you're designing your own scenarios. All right, so we're done looking at that. I'll tell you what, let's start the scenario builder. So again, sit rep test scenario one. We're just playing around with this. Um, configure the game. What the hell? Man? Choose a scenario to edit. Yes, I just did it. Scenario. Oh, I have to go to the next screen. Sorry. Okay. Um. So here's player one. Oh, in trench mode, nice. Supply hexes, there we go. Does he need supply hexes? Maybe that's it. So I'm gonna designate this a supply hex. Maybe that will allow me to use that as an airfield. Then, go into adjust units oh no what happened I will knock this down to half strength it gives you can see my, my my budget going up there a little bit requisition units, now that I have some money. Stinger with truck. 
Uh, yeah, there's no, like, airfield units or anything like that garrison with the truck. Maybe that's it. I have 143 points. Alright, I'll put some garrison troops there. Just to, you know, see what's going on. Just, just for fun. Again, I'm just playing around here. Um, I went ahead and bought that. And I will deploy them. the hell, man? I just did requisition a unit. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. No, I didn't. Garrison with truck. Yes, requisition the unit, please. There we go. Now I can deploy the unit there. So, who knows? Um... I'm probably breaking my scenario a little bit here, but that's fine. Oh, no, I'll just, here, uh, sit rep, uh, uh, Dutch versus Poles 2. Cool, so we have a new version of the scenario. Get out of the screen, we just saved it, we're fine. Play the scenario, we're gonna pick, uh, I guess it's this one. I, oh, no, we don't. Nope, that wasn't it. Must have been the first one. Yeah, there they are. Cool. I'm not going to play the whole game again, guys. I'm just seeing if uh, we're correct in what we're talking about so far as the... Uh... Setting up a friendly airbase. Attacker. Okay, hold on, what's going on here? Um, Eastern player might need all objectives, yes. Uh, aren't aren't the none gold-based or gold box flags deployment points? Uh, no, you can deploy your units whatever you want. Um, that's the scenario designer. And then, you know, your units pretty much just start off there. It's still not letting me supply. Look at that. All these icons are still shut off. I don't know, guys. Oh, garrison with truck. I don't want to... Maybe I have the wrong unit selected. Hold on. Um, air units. Alright, select the Apache. It's still not letting me, uh... Either, uh, add replacements or, um... Whatchamacallit. So, I don't know. We now have an airfield, we have an we have a friendly unit on there, we have it designated as a supply point. I don't know guys. We're gonna rename this unit um Gaz's Busted Ass Um Apaches that don't work. Uh, oh there's not enough space for that. Um Apaches. Here we go. Gaz's busted Apaches that don't want to resupply for some reason. <laughs> Maybe it's because they haven't used anything up. Hold on, let me uh not be a wise ass here. Right? Um, what the hell, man? Maybe if, I'll, I'll shoot a couple missiles and then I'll see what may not be letting me resupply them because they haven't used up any uh, any ammo yet. I'm using up a lot of my air power right off the bat. Oh no! Send the air recon first, dummy. To spy the enemy and then send the bombers to... Uh, now call in the air. 
Thunder Strike, you retard. How about that? We will stay away from those Shilkas. Shokas. Again, we're trying to uh, knock out enemy air defense so that my Apaches can actually do something. Awesome. Again, we're not going to play the whole game here. Just I'm hoping to use up at least a little bit of missiles so that my, uh, I can test and see if I can resupply my pad. I'm literally trying to teach myself again. Um, Gaz, I'm surprised you're still up with this. It must be pretty late where you were. Now this artillery can attack from quite a distance. You can see how all these forces are in range. So I'm going to shoot some EMPs with my... Uh... Of my mechanized infantry already. I take back what I was saying about doing well. Find these guys that swung around my right wing. Where'd you guys go? There we go. All right, now we'll see what my longbow can do. So my longbow flies over the uh, Soviet T-72s. They do what Apaches do with T-72s. They took some losses, but that's fine. Are you still letting me move? Again, I'm just testing this out here, so I'm going to end the turn. Yeah, I didn't even move any of these guys out here. Again, I'm just playing with Artillery duel. Those uh, T-72s and then go back to base. Now supply, <laughs> supply is probably going to be uh, next turn. I tell you what, Gaz's Apaches did pretty well this time. They sort of to the southern Polish drive here. Allowing me to shift some other resource back to the north and help out this battle. Uh, 
Control R for replacements. Nice. Bombard these fools. They're too far away. Notice I don't get a, uh, whatchamacallit, a prediction. And they don't show me the damage, so I don't know if they're too far away. They're technically in range, but this game has a rule called partial spotting, I think that's what it is. So I can't quite tell um, if I did any damage against those crowds. I may have. Uh oh. Let's see if I know what the hell I'm doing here. We've now used up some of our missiles, so can I replace the can I uh Yay! Replacements and resupply. There it is guys. Right, we cracked the code, we figured it out. So I'm gonna go ahead and put replacements and repair my Apaches. My patches are not back at 10. That's how you do it. Uh, so guys, you are right. That unit has to, uh, that airfield, I think, has to have a, uh, uh, and has to have a, a, a friendly unit on it in order to be considered a friendly airstrip. I also have it set up as a supply point, so hopefully that is also making a difference. Alright guys, um, we've been streaming a little bit over an hour now. Uh, again, this was just supposed to be a little baby one. Um... I do apologize for the little bit of, uh, don't put him up. I do apologize for the little bit of technical issues we had earlier. That should hopefully not be the case. The grads with support. Come back. Nuke him. Uh, I had a little bit of technical issues trying to get this fight back. a little bit more aggressive because I'm not really there are Russians up here somewhere. Or I should say bulls. How about I'm tired of getting rockets thrown at me? Hey Grotz. Have a taste of that. Um yeah so I'm just I'm just playing around here. So again guys thanks very much for the um, for coming out to the stream. Again I, I kind of apologize for the uh, little bit of um, technical issues we had there at the start. Again, trying to get this game to display uh, proved to be a bit of a nightmare. Um, we did get through it though, uh, more or less. I can't quite display the whole screen, but you're seeing 90, 95% of it. Um, it's just the bottom part that's uh, being a little bit of a pain right now. Um, so then position easier to defend, yes. Uh, I was on slip, so didn't go home until oh, nearly midnight. Okay, yeah. Yeah, it's, uh, good grief. It's gotta be like 1.16 in the morning where you are now. Um, if I have my, which we'll call it correct. All right, guys. Um, any flag is a is a deployment. Okay, I'm trying to catch up in the chat here. Um, aren't the non-gold boxed flags deployment points? Okay, so um, no, the, um, pretty much when you're setting up a scenario, you can deploy wherever you want. Um. Yes, I think they are. The attacker normally have one in the deployment zone, but the defender they have several. Uh, talk about objective hexes. Now I set up one for the um, for the Dutch because when I had none set up for the Dutch, they like number one it wouldn't let me save the game, and when I did not have one objective hex and at least the uh, uh, at least one Dutch unit pretty much sitting on top of it, they lost the game like as soon as I hit in turn. Like, it wasn't even like the uh, the poles got around behind me and it occupied it. I literally hit save and it was like, er, game's over because you've not lost all your objectives. I have one objective, but I wasn't sitting on it. So, again, I don't know if that's something with the rules engine or something I'm not familiar with yet. Um, I'm still kind of tinkering around with this thing. Uh, so I'll let you guys know what I find out there. Um, yes, guys, you are correct. Uh, might that be because they are fully loaded? Yeah, at first those uh, those uh, patches were fully loaded. Um, obviously, this is pilot error. Absolutely, dude. I <laughs> I don't know what the hell I'm doing with this game yet, or um, how to work with my Apaches. Um, cool. 
All right, everyone, I'm going to go ahead and end the stream. Again, thanks very much for coming out to another episode of Sit Rep Podcast. We will still be streaming something on Sunday. Um, if we have a live player to do either Panzer Leader, Valor and Victory, you know, our usual games, um, Valor Victory, Panzer Leader, uh, what else can we do? Air War C21, Battlefield Revolution, we'll figure something out. Uh, back to Case Yellow, says Rasmus. Cool, good luck. Um, maybe we'll do some Case Yellow this weekend. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, but again, if I don't have a player for this weekend, or so far I don't, but I haven't checked my mail recently. If we don't have a historical player for a live game on Sunday, I will go ahead and set up Crete. I'm announcing it now. I am setting up Crete. Um, Operation Mercury, May 1941, Crete in Panzer General, and we'll, um, we'll go ahead and play that on Sunday. Crete was requested um, uh, on last week's stream. That's if we don't get a live player for our actual, you know, a quote-unquote real game. Um, but if, no wor if not, no worries, we have a backup, and that backup is going to be Crete in May of 41. We'll see if the Germans can uh, defeat the New Zealanders and the British again um, in the Mediterranean. Uh, but for now, we're going to go ahead and uh, close out the stream. Especially if I can figure out how to... Cool. Um, we're going to go ahead and close out the stream. Thanks very much, everybody. Um, you missed the other music. I think you need to go to a doctor. You love Panzer Leader music. Don't worry, Jen. I have a feeling that you will be hearing plenty of Panzer, Panzer Leader music this Sunday. But, again, we'll see uh, if anybody else uh, steps up for an actual game um, in the weekend. But for now, closing out the stream, thanks very much for your support, everybody. As always, um, we definitely appreciate your support. Check out our new merchandise we have on Zazzle.com, the new beer stein. I think it's up there for Sit Rep Podcast. Um, that looks pretty awesome. Uh, yeah, so we'll be in touch uh, later on the, this week. Again, I'll see most of you again on Sunday. But for now, logging off. Take it easy, everybody. And uh, thanks as always.